Good morning to those on live stream. I would like us to consider this morning one of the provisions the Lord has given us in our fight of faith in maintaining our connection with him. And there's one word that he has given us, and obviously one thing he has given us, I mean out of many, is the mind he has given us. And I want to look at the mind we have and are given through Christ Jesus. In 1 Corinthians, it talks about the mind of Christ in 1 Corinthians uh, 2.16. For who, ha who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may be instructed of him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Now this mind is a productive, a ready mind. Amen. It's not slothful at all. Amen. It is a sound mind. Yeah. Yes. In 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Amen. We also, with this prodig pro uh, <laughs> prodigious mind, mm -hmm. it's a ready mind. Yeah. Yeah. In 1 Peter 5 verse 2, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Yeah, ready mind yeah. And also we can see this mind worked out in the Old Testament uh, when Nehemiah was uh, gathering the children of Israel to build the wall. So he built the wall with all the wall joined together until half the height thereof, for the people had a mind to work. They knew of the dangers around them. They knew of Sanballat, Tobiah, and others that were trying to tear down this wall, but they had a focus that wasn't going to deter them from doing the work because they had a mind to work. The heart was in the work and allowed them to go through this with purpose and dedication. Now, we are building on this sure foundation. Those in Christ have been given a mind to work as co-laborers with him. We have not been called to fleeting, trifling, distracting thrills the world has to offer, because our enemy prowls around seeking whom he may devour, yet this calls for steadfastness and focus and drive on our part so that we can have a mind to work. But what I want to look at is just not the mind to work, but a sober mind. Yeah, amen. In 1 Peter 1 13, it says, Wherefore, girding out the loins of your mind, be sober. Yeah. Mm. Now, these loins, they're just kind of like robes of, of the mind. You have to pick them up for better activity so you're not distracted uh -huh. yes. by things getting in the way of your forward progress amen. in Christ. Setting our affections on things above also is entailed in girding up the loins of our mind. We have a direction. So let's gird up the loins of our mind to get any distractions, any hindering out of the way. Amen. Now, on the matter of sobriety, we are on a journey for which only faith can equip us. But we also know that we have the powers of darkness all around us. And... It was only, it's only through sobriety that we can have this drive, this singleness of heart to not be distracted or not be led away by all, these, by all these powers of darkness which are greater than us. Life in Christ does not allow us to be swept away in the shifting sands of time or of generations of opinion, but placing confidence in the rock of ages. Yes, amen. Anything that throws the mind out of gear or moves us towards the realm of pure passion and fleshliness contributes to this lack of sobriety and is very lethal to the soul. Yes, yes, yes. Sobriety yeah. is a focused yes. heart, yes. an undistracted mind, mm -hmm. a fixed affection. Fixed. Yeah. We are admonished in 1 Thessalonians 5 to... Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Now, we're given certain provisions that can only be utilized in a state of sobriety. 
But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of righteousness and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. First Thessalonians 5.8 but because of the aggressive stance of the adversary of the devil, as a warring or lion, seeking whom he may devour, the smallest taste or of sin leads us and pulls us into the abyss, the whirlpool of sin, to which it's very hard to get out. Yes, amen. We are, this is why we are told in 1 Corinthians 5.22 to abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. Because of the sin which so easily entangles us. Yes. Were it not for our spiritual weaponry used in a, in a soberness, in a state of sobriety, we would be in a very dire condition. Amen. Sobriety not only arms the soul for warfare, but is required in all stages of life. Yes. Amen. It is required at the beginning of our spiritual life in Christ, where it talks about in, first, um, in Titus 2.6, Young men likewise exhorted to be sober-minded. Yeah. Yeah. Older ladies are to teach young women to be sober. And those near the end of life are exhorted the aged men to be sober. sober. Amen. Sobriety is in all life to get us, no, I'm sorry, sobriety is required. It is a must to make sure that as we progress from one stage of glory to another, we are not distracted by the cares of this life. Amen. Amen. To win the race set before us, becoming proficient at the art of being sober, aware, and focused on that prize is a must. Amen. Amen. Who has the message? I would like to say a prayer for Brother Ricky. Brother, uh, dear Lord, I want to thank you, Father, that we are all here gathered together in your name, Lord, to meditate and learn from the brothers and sisters um, uh, who you have placed in our midst, Father. Lord, I pray, Father, uh, for Brother Ricky, that you would allow our ears and our eyes and our minds to be open to receiving the truth and not having any muddling, distracting things in our way from receiving the meditations you have given to Brother Ricky. For your name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.